You're now rocking with the lips, so stop reaching for the ozone. I see some figs, I know, but they look different with some clothes on. What's up, though? What's up is that I got my hands on this deluxe Mezco 112 Wolverine. I've been trying to put this together for a minute. I've been away from home, and every time I try to start, it comes out super negative, and I'm trying to be fair. I'm trying to be fair. And unbiased. Uh, but Wolverine is my jam. It means a lot for me to do this, even if no one's looking. You know what I'm saying? So we're just, we're just sweeping all that into the trash, and we're starting again. Here we go. New friend. Let's look a little closer at the packaging. It's a 112 collective from Mezco, so and it is a fancy one, so you get this fancy tin, extra long status, awesome Art Adams artwork on the front there, and this uh, John Byrne on the side. This was also the one featured on the old school Toy Biz, second edition Wolverine toy. You get it upside down, up here, X's on either side, and uh, you know, you get the same front artwork just here with the slash mark on the back. Personally, I like the way that Mezco would traditionally give you the breakdown of everything that's in here. I think that should be on the packaging, but those of us that know, we, we, we know. You know. You're rushing, honey. You're gonna choke. Uh, also, this toy is not a toy for children. Welcome to my toy channel. <laughs> it's not for kids. So we pull this off. Just a little... Oh, look, there's a little couple of pads in there. Set that somewhere gently. I have this overwhelming urge to just chuck stuff. What is that? All this sucking and jacking and chucking. What is that? Okay, and you get this nice little read-up from the 112 Collective. Honestly, highlighting this big paragraph here, this is the, it's the same deal with Hot Toys. People wonder, and if they collect Mezco, it's the same deal. Instruction sheet for how the effects pieces sit and how your sentinel diorama base sets up little tissue paper and set them suckers over here and look at this. Oh, wow. Wow. What do you do first? You just start yanking them out, peeling them out of here. Oh, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't come out. This is crazy. Let's just upend the thing, huh? Float that away. Suck. Okay. Okay. Oh, here is the Wolverine portion. God, you're not even going to be able to pop this free, right? Without a bunch of stuff spilling out. They're going to be little tape dots. Not even. This is how we unpackage a Mezco. Been a while since I opened one of these suckers. Man. And this is a nice, clean way to sort of display everything that's in there. Yeah, I can't really tug at anything else. And I have to stand it up. It's all, yeah, it's going to start falling to the floor. So we'll take a quick look at this other clam. <laughs> yeah. Teaser all a clam. Batteries included, huh? So don't, you know, don't buy this one to not open. Don't be that guy. All right, like 20 minutes later, comes with all this. Loaded! All right, this is the Mezco Toys 112 Collective Deluxe Wolverine out of the package. Right away, he arrives with the first appearance head, black belt, and tiger stripes that are just a little too thin for my taste. The most divisive part is also the hallmark of the Mezco 112 figures. It is the cloth clothing. That maybe doesn't work the best at this scale. Maybe it's just not to your taste. Maybe he doesn't fit in with solid plastic figures as well as he fits in with other Mezcos and other Mezcos only. The head is a solid plastic and these sculpts are really nice. Little schmutz on the nose there. It comes packaged in this first appearance way with the, with the smaller ears and the whiskers. Look at that, really nicely done. The neck is also a plastic piece just to lessen the severity of the, the, the transition to the cloth goods. Tiger stripes, the prominent feature and how this figure is often denoted. I feel like they're a little bit, a little thin, a little small. Hate to break into the comparisons already, but yeah, no, no I don't, no I don't. This is the second edition Wolverine from Toy Biz from 92. How many years ago was that now? Uh, Anyway, you can see the the color is always a stylistic choice, but I feel like the tiger stripes should be bolder. This is kind of a lot of black in there. This is kind of a lot of black in there. The shoulder pads are a firm but flexible plastic. Much, much better than the ones that cap full over the shoulder. I don't understand who thought that was a good idea for the brown costume Wolverine or Daredevil or all these other characters that don't have anything like this going on. They're a little bit mezco -ified. You get some nice weathering in there too. Some slash marks and pitting and such. Uh, you can see rivets or whatever these little things are are detailed and painted over the top. It's cool, but like nobody asked for that. What is this big ugly piece here? You know what I mean? They do what's called, it's sort of mezco as it's known. Just a slight deviation from, from the traditional look. 
which is I, but I'm not personally into that. I'm more about the, the accuracy. Again, these are going to be reused, these gauntlets. They do look really nice. I like that for sort of a real world application. It's almost this forearm bracer piece. Is that an armor? The claw housings there are pretty nicely detailed as well. The, the arms look good. They've got this hair detailed in there. Again, no visible pins. But these are the same arms that they've been giving us with Mezco figures, I, I don't know, since day one, years ago? I, tell me I'm wrong there. Uh, it's, it's like hot toys for people who don't understand the difference. It's, it's an articulated body underneath with cloth goods over the top. They've chosen to put the seam on the back as opposed to on either side. I, I don't really see the point of that. I guess if this was a real world costume, you might have a zipper up the back, how I do on my Spider-Man. To work that zipper, I just put a piece of string though. Then I can reach over my shoulder and grab that and zip and unzip my costume. The shorts are for some reason a pleather. It makes them clash just slightly with the plastic uh, used for the rest of the blue. Not too bad. Overall, I think that blue is a little bit dark, but, but that's just a personal preference thing. The belt, it looks okay. It comes with another belt and a couple of buckles. The other one is the more traditional red. It's more mezco than I want, but this black isn't really representative of, uh, you know, maybe the more, the later astonishing costumes, honestly. So I don't really think it has a place here, and it's really obnoxious to change them. You'll, you'll see here shortly. Legs, uh, this same cloth here. It may just be like a full body suit that he's stitched into, in fact. Otherwise, you can see hints of the musculature through here, which is which is nice. That's the hard thing. You're replicating these comic book characters that often they, they look like naked, muscular dudes with painted on clothes. So the plastic is fitting in that sense. But some some artists, Dave Eaglesham and people like that, perhaps draw these things to look more like cloth goods. The boots have been mezcofied, but it's it's real mild. It all fits within the traditional look of it, if if that makes any sense, you know. A lot of detail here. But if you push it further away and kind of squint your eyes, they just they look just like the traditional tiger stripe boots. Um, treads on the bottom there for some reason patterned like that. I that, that's whatever, whatever. Peg holes down there too. It's difficult. It's like the overall aesthetic is sort of like a Mego figure or something. And it's just the proportions. He's a little. I mean, he's fit. He's fit. I, I suppose this works for a short, stocky guy. But the problem is that Mezco uses this body on every single character. So, easing into accessories, you saw all that crap earlier. Here be the heads. Taking a closer look at the rest of the heads, they actually pop on and off very, very easily. It's really nice. Really refreshing. The issue I have is it's, it's difficult to know where, where to put my my hand when I'm doing the thing. He comes with a second first appearance head showing some teeth. And it's like, do I grab him here? And it pushes and stresses. And ultimately, with my rough hands, will wreck this fabric costume. You know? I could hold him down here by the shorts. Similar deal, though. Y you could put your hands on the belt, but this thing is so finicky, it's just going to come off of here. I touch it two or three times, and it's going to fall off. At least it's not like the other one where the buckle is falling off, too. Anyway, we're talking about the heads. And this is another really nicely detailed one. Uh, you know, I've struggled with their teeth a little bit. This isn't bad. You get this close to them and they're little... But they don't look like the weird little needle baby doll teeth thing like like a lot of their, their stuff does. The eyes look pretty good too. There's almost a glimmer in there. You know, they, they have a little shimmer to them. That is nice. The lines in his face that you can see through there too. I mean, that thing is obviously really tight. But it's not, you know... But you can see little seam lines in it and stuff, too. They match the neck really well, but they're darker than the fabric. So, what do you do? Let's go for the unmasked heads here. You get this nice little cowl piece. It seems a bit overly wrinkled. Um, to me, it looks almost melted. That's weird. Anyway, it just sets right over the top here. Okay, first unmasked head. And, and this is nice. You get the slightly more toned down hair, whatever that means. I mean, it's still obviously insane. Great, great big mutton chops coming down there. Really nice wrinkles, nicely detailed eyes. This is a great looking head sculpt. There is just, there's a lot of care put into the little details on these things. While we're still here, you get another unmasked head that's very, very, very similar to the other one. The hair is just a little bigger, a little pointier. I I really don't feel like they should have included two heads that are almost indistinguishable. But you do get another color of paint in the hair. That's really cool. Put that cowl on there. Nice bold mutton chops. Nicely detailed eyes. If I was going to use an unmasked head, I'd just use this one and probably forget the other one existed.
Or vice versa. Thanks, though. Okay. Now, here are the more modern, traditional Wolverine heads. These look, these look really good. This, I mean, this looks like leather. Looks like textured leather in there. Look at that action. Uh, again, seam lines on top of the cowl. Wrinkles when you get close to the face. You can see the eyes here. They're just whited out for that, that effect. Something on his lip. You could put stubble on the chin, but I mean, I, I could go either way. I like that nice clean look. It's typically how it was depicted in the comics. I really, really like the sculpting on the face, the lips, the detail there, the little wrinkles and the subtle paint. I can't overstate how good that is. Um, it's not as smooth around that edge there. I feel like it should be just perfect paint for the price of this thing, but... Alright, next up, there are eight heads, by the way. <laughs> So you get a little bit of teeth here. He's ramping up. I feel like just the, the lines, the wrinkles they've sculpted on the face, though, are just, they're not dynamic enough. You know what I mean? But it's very similar. The eyes are maybe squinted a little with some, some extra wrinkling there. I like that little return hook on the ears. Same deal. You're going to see the same details on the back sides of these. It's just, it's going to be this face where it's really changing. On it goes. It's going to go on so easily. Full-blown, open-mouth, shouting head, and it goes inside there, it's recessed. These teeth, I mean, they look good. They look good. People might argue for some pointier incisors for our friend here. Are these wrinkles new? Have they added those little ones down by the chin? It's funny. I like that you can see the nose sculpted in there and everything else. This looks really nice. I guess I don't have it ported down all the way. Mm-hmm. They come back a lot on this neck that's, you know, it's a little, it's a little long. It's a little long, Mezco. But they're like, sorry, we've been using this neck with every character. Sorry if it's too long for this specific character. These are the parts we use for every character. Except for this head. Except for this head. And this is overall one of the coolest looking ones just because it's, it's ragged. It's the battle damaged. Shredded. See that? Dude, I just hooked that. Ah, are you kidding me? They're just, they're just not for me. Don't say that already. Why, why are his lips silver? Why is there silver paint on his, around his lips like that? I mean, that's obviously not cut down to the bone. You can see it up on his lips. He doesn't have metal skin that's painted over it. This isn't cyber. He has metal bones. That's the idea here, is that you can see metal. Like, this is torn all the way down to his skull. Yeah! That's freaking rad. That ear's all ripped up. Battle damaged head. And I like the, the, the expression, the mild derangement. The sick joy in the thing. I look at all of the hands, even the ones from off of the figure. I hate when guys do that. It's like, we get it. We see the ones that are on the friggin' thing. But here we are. You're telling me you got a headless, handless figure just chilling somewhere? <laughs> Taking a closer look, here are the closed fists. Here are the open hands. And then he also comes with a pointing right hand and a variation on the left open hand. And a closer look at the clawed hands. Here are the fisted. You know what? I got to point out, though, right away. This is the deluxe version, and it comes with multiple sets of clawed hands. But why are these the most poorly detailed ones that Mezco has put out in their, like, most deluxe expensive Wolverine figure? Please, let's compare notes, see if anyone's got a similar experience, but it's not a one-off here because you can see it's on every claw and it's on all the hands. You see this muddy little finish towards the ends there? Well, here's my X-Force Wolverine from years prior, and it is dead clean. It doesn't have any of that. I will practically grab people on the street and be like, look at how clean these Wolverine claws are. But you spend nearly twice as much and you get, you get muddy, sloppy claws from these guys? What is up with that? Okay, looking at the next pair of muddy, sloppy claws... These are the ones in the open hands. And these actually, where they sit on the back of the hand is funny. The like angle is off when you try to, if you try to position this like straight up and have it all jutting the same way. That's really not so bad. But it's this, all this muddy crud up here. It's just not finished very well. I, I don't get it. I think it's real noticeable here on this one. Yeah. And then finally you get a set of bone claws. A really cool touch. I 
and I think they look pretty good. They're supposed to look rough and uneven. So the little bits of garbage they didn't file off of their pieces here, I guess, fit in a little better. I do like having the options. I just want to see this stuff way on point, though, for the price. Go ahead and look it up. I'll wait. He does come with a swappable belt and swappable buckle for three variations on a belt, which is a, which is a fun touch. Let me point out something, though, that I don't think is a feature. It's just the way that the shoulder pads are mounted. They're hinged on here, so it has a little bit of play, a little bit of movement to move with the shoulder. So it's not just rigid, stuck in one place, or what have you. But some people seem to be under the impression that this is like a play feature. If you shove it up like that, I, I don't I don't see that. Plus, you kind of hide that one tiger stripe. It was so minuscule already, and now it's like gone. I don't think that's like a play feature. Like, oh, this is how first appearance Wolverine looked. Like, you could see all the way up his shoulder and a sick growth coming off of it. And how that shoulder pad wasn't really part of the shirt, but just part of his body, I guess. Oh. They just move a little to support the articulation. But hey, if you want to shove them up here like some freak, you go right ahead. You have your Wolverine toy like this, with my blessing. So these belts actually, they snap together on the side, and it is a tremendous pain. You can see, and they're both a little different too, but it's the same idea. They got a peg on one end and a hole on the other, and you just, you just force it together. You force it together. It only really fits right above the shorts, that's the thinnest part, but you kind of want it splitting it, so you don't have like a gap, I, I think. But if you start out that way, you're never going to get it on there. So you kind of put it here, where you have the room to do the thing, which is to bring it all the way over, and then force this. You really got to force this down, which is hard because, man, this is an expensive and fairly delicate toy. And this one is not so bad. But then it's the aftermath here. I'm trying to bring this back without destroying the stuff underneath. I just got a real loose, light grip on it. And I could try to sort of float it down over the top of the shorts a little. Because otherwise it's doing that. You know, and let's say you spent all this time forcing it over the shorts a little and you didn't and you didn't break the buckle and have the thing fall off. Well, you pose them a little bit and it just rides right back up here. Just give me one good belt and put it in the right place, please. The black thing. We're not going to say it's not not cool, but it doesn't fit any iteration of the Tiger Stripe character. That's why we have this overly busy, because that's how Mezco does, red belt. Uh, and, you know, for, why, why the clasp is different, I have no idea. This one is even more finicky, and I seem to be destroying the one side, just pegging it in over and over. But it has a swappable buckle. The X logo... Or a traditional belt buckle. I mean, traditional and also huge. And also huge. Anyway, so you just come over to the side here. Peel this sucker off if it hasn't just fallen off on its own. Find the right way here. And same deal. This one is just harder because it's a taller peg and it tends to lean away from you. God. Kind of. You see what I mean, though? I would like it a little lower. But in all the jiggering to get it there, it's just... Ugh, I'm going to destroy something. Fruity, delicate, little... And so that, you know, your belt buckle and things are right. It's actually... It's a big hole, little hole game. Slightly larger hole on this end. And these just push on there. Really nice. And that kind of looks like a thing. Gently again, it's like, where do I put my frickin' hands? <laughs> I went in the other room and sanded the crap out of all my fingers again. Eh. And he looks pretty good, right? And you're over here trying to feel pretty good about the $155 plus shipping you spent on the thing, right? Just don't, just don't let anyone get their $20 Marvel Legend toy too close. Ah. He comes with all these slash effects. They're a little finicky, but overall, I think they're pretty rad. I've never seen an inclusion like this with a Wolverine figure. They kind of pop in on the claws, but it is so incredibly minuscule. Look, that is just the tip of the tip. You just breathe wrong and they come off of here. What you do is you just kind of find the direction and find the way that seems intuitive to him to be running it. And you can see these little divots in there. I mean, they should have come in like an eighth inch or something. Because otherwise, it's just on the tippity tip. Which again, it works, but I can't even keep a hold of that thing. And you, you get several of them for... 
you just you pose it up perfectly. You'll see some in the pictures. You pose it up perfectly. You you get all three claws in the thing ish, and it looks like he's swiping and slashing at stuff. That one's a little off. Don't look too close at it. You get the idea. Unless unless you're trying to do like this great big X one, because this is just. <laughs> They tried to make this one a little more freeform with like proper holes. Something like that. Look, I'm no company shill. No one even knows I'm down here doing this stuff. But that doesn't mean I like to push it the other way and just shit on, on stuff that real human beings actually worked hard on. Maybe the person had something even better in mind too and, and, and the boss comes along and says, time's up, we're going with this. To be fair, it, it does work. You just, you look at the directions... You go ahead and you even put a more energetic head on there if you want. We're already spending half a friggin' day on this, right? I mean, whatever this is. But look, you spend some time with this toy, and you can see that, I mean, legitimately, a lot of love went into this thing. All, all of these different effects, some, some seemingly a little experimental. With weird little usages and stuff that's just so seemingly insignificant, like a different belt buckle. It is a little bit different than like a Hasbro product where they practically like drop something on the floor and then stand there and watch you pick it up. And then they're like, now say thank you. Did we look at this one already, huh? Huh? So he comes with the typical Mezco stand, little base here with a little foot plug, or you could knock that out and put this sweet articulated arm on there. These are some of my favorite figure stands are these nice Mezco ones. They have a hinge at the base, couple of other hinges. Really simple design, but allows your figure more dynamic poses. They also come with a little baggie here to keep your stuff in. But wait, there's more! Because this is the Deluxe, you get this awesome Deluxe base. It is an out-of-scale chunk of Sentinel that is melting into the floor, but it looks really, really good. The detail on this thing. Just freakish. You can tell someone's been trying real hard to get inside there. The different colors and, and paint washes and, and just all these little damage details are so, so cool. Underside, whole lot of screws, batteries. Of course, you got to screw them in. Takes the three AAAs that it came with. Let's kick the sucker on, how about? With it on, you have this little button neatly concealed here that will light this thing up. This eye even comes out. Eh. To reveal it's flickering. How cool is that? He can also be clutching this thing. Stick this on some claws. He just tore that sucker out. What else? It actually has ports. It actually has ports in several locations on the base. For you to port your stand into. From one side to the other. Ah, there it is. But there, there are a few of those. Does that help with the price? Sure, all of this stuff does. Accessories are a big deal in this game to some of us. I, I absolutely love it. When they jam in all these extra heads, hands, anything random, a sentinel base. What else do you give Wolverine, you know what I mean? Here he is next to the base. You can see, of course, the scale is just garbage, but it's just, it's just a base, man. It's just to add a little extra flair. Give the dog something to chew on. So the Mezco 112 figures are cloth goods over an articulated underbody. Let's see how she moves. You guys saw this head is just on a little barbell joint up here. No hinge or anything, but you get uh, you get a lot of tilt. Nothing that's going to bring this height down a little lower, though. Should have cut that neck in half. But the neck being a separate piece, it will move down here as well. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. The shoulders do have a butterfly, but it's it's minimal. It's not dug into the pec here. So it just it gives you that little bit of rock, but you don't get like a deep forward with, say, a gasp Marvel legend. But you are going to find a similar ball jointed shoulder there that'll rotate all the way around. And that shoulder pad will go with it because it's actually pegged right on top of there and has a little bit of a hinge. If you force it, it'll pop off, but it goes back on pretty easily. They do have uh, bicep cuts here, which is nice, but you can see the way that it follows the shape of that ball. It's really awkward to kind of turn that thing. Double jointed pinless technology here, but uh, I don't think they ever bragged about it like it wasn't a normal thing, you know. So good on them. 
Wrists, however, are ball jointed, which which works. It does all the things. It's just it's just kind of finicky, you know. Whichever that way that thing is shaped, you'll come in on it, or you can go back, and it'll rotate all the way around. Torso underneath here is a diaphragm cut, so you get pretty decent side to side and back and forward. At the waist here, though, too, I don't really know what kind of joint that is. It's almost like it's it's not hinged, but it's not a ball joint either because it doesn't twist all the way around. Or maybe it is a ball joint and it's just locked in by the ovular shape. But it, it's a, not a waist that's going to rotate, I don't think, unless I just completely destroy it. Legs are going to come out to the sides pretty well. I feel like it's that really ugly, like a McFarlane DC style joint. So these will these will come out really far. But again, watch the clothing. You don't want to tear that. It's going to come forward and, well, not so much back because of this. It's going to have a harder butt piece underneath there. And he does have double jointed knees. Nothing at the calf there. And then when you come down to the boot, it gets a little weird. It's just like ball jointed into here. So it has a lot of slip and slide and a little bit of tilt. Some forward, some back. But it's just, it's not that nice. As far as trying to get the legs really dynamic, it's... They're just a little stumpy, looks a little frumpy. The clothes bunch up. It just takes a little extra work. You're not just moving the plastic. You just you have to take some time out to adjust the fabric as well. Checking the height, our Mezco 112 Collective Wolverine is six and a quarter inches to the top of his head, six and a half to the top of the ears. For comparison, here he is next to a couple of other Mezco 112 Collective Wolverines, X-Force and Old Man Logan. And they both actually have the, the nice, perfect claws that I've always bragged about. People want to rip on Mezco, and I'm like, well, actually, <laughs> actually, they have the nicest Wolverine claws I've ever seen. Well, they used to. But this, all this other crap, this is this is no good. Pleather jumpsuit here, and they were doing this for shoulder pads where they didn't need any. But the fabric flap thing is probably doesn't translate well either. But that would have been better for this. Head looks okay. A lot of cool little details with the Mezcos. Claw housings back in this day were way too big. And, uh, you know, I don't know what's up with the moon boots here. Here he is next to my Michael Shannon Mezco cable and Deadpool. Now, the cable figure is a perfect example of what I love about Mezco. The intricate detailing, his armor, and, and, and these weapons, all that. You would never see detail like this on weaponry, you know? So killer. These little knives and guns and all this stuff, all this stuff is removable. And they can Mezcoify a little bit because it's, it's armor. They, it would change panel to panel. Same for DP over here. I mean, look at this. That dry brushing on this sucker and removable magazines and all this stuff. At this scale, this is uh, that's fantastic. That's a leaf sight for the 203. But uh, he also has that other end of the spectrum. It's very, it's very pajama-like, the look overall. And I think they, they do an admirable job. They do. I have just long held that as a Hot Toys collector, too. It's like, I think you need at least that scale for the fabric clothes to lay right. But, you know, if they're stretching them super tight like this and locking the waist joints down, you know, I, I think it works okay. And they all do the, the plastic head. It just it becomes an issue with the transition. What do you do? He was, uh, he was of the turtleneck ilk from way back, you know? These Mezcos have so many cool accessories, they're literally just falling off of them. It's a grenade with his face on it. And now here's a Hasbro take on some Tiger Stripe action. You could more or less recreate both of these looks, though, with the one Mezco. But you can't bulk up those Tiger Stripes. I think these are a little more appropriate, the sizing on these. Even if this one's a little lopsided, how dare you? Now this is a first appearance Wolverine. This came in a two-pack with the Hulk, but at the time the single-pack figures were nineteen ninety nine. So that's what they would have sold him at by himself. Now this one's from just last year, and Hasbro has raised their prices a couple of times. This is twenty seven ninety nine, quite a far cry from the twenty bucks they were just a couple years ago. And as an aside, I do want to say this: this dude launched at PulseCon last year. I refreshed that page again and again, expecting it to sell out in seconds or even minutes, like every other offering they put on that site. To this day, it's still up there. So people people are not having this twenty seven ninety nine thing. The fan backlash online is is more intense than ever now. And in fact, nothing has sold out on the Pulse website in a very long time. Huge surprise to me. Let me just say one more time before I pull these out of the way. $19.99, $27.99. People have lost their minds, pissed at $27.99.
Well, this is $155 for this one. Sorry, I should have left these guys standing up there when I said that. Do you feel it's that much better? Do you feel it's like five, six times better? Well, what about with these? They're essentially the same thing. And basically looks you can achieve with the one figure. So that that is really cool. That is a cool value proposition there. If you're into this cloth look, you can get you know an arguably better battle damaged head and bone claws, even a different belt, things like that. But you can't have these nice these nice tiger stripes. Oh look, they went for a thinner one on that one. And then this is back to that thicker. I, I think this is a really nice, these are some nice tiger stripes here. Now Hasbro does reuse this body again and again as Mezco reuses that one. But this one is for Wolverine, so it is a stockier, shorter body. I mean, Cable is supposed to be like a foot taller. And again, 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 155 But if you're looking for that cloth aesthetic, there really is no competing with this. And he could achieve nearly all of those looks that those other figures were rocking. But not these two. This is Hasbro's X-Force Wolverine, as well as the retro-carded brown and gold. Mezco has a brown costume version, but I think it hinges on this shoulder finish here. The way these are drawn in the comics, it's easy to just put a little flap there, or even paint an, a plastic action figure. But for cloth goods at this scale, it just probably doesn't hang right, and that's why they elected to put the awful shoulder pads on, like they did with the X-Force one. Like, what is this? What? What? And he's back here just to point out once again, this was the this was half the price. This was eighty dollars for this sum of gun. Uh, but you know what? This one is twenty. This one is twenty. You know what I would tell people? It's better in every way except the claws. You can't touch those Mezco claws. Now this is a review, but it's also my review, so it's a lot of Wolverine love. This is the throwback nineteen ninety two Toy Biz second edition Wolverine. This little guy was my jam for many years, as well as maybe a source of inspiration if you were making a Wolverine figure, even today, as he nails a lot of the aesthetic. For fun, this was a re-release later with, with something, a repaint, and they lost their minds on the Tiger Stripes too, because they were super minimalist, and maybe, maybe that was the only toy they had there to go off of, was this reissue later on. Is this the one that came with the Blackbird? Nope, I think that was actually this one, with the, uh, the more metallic colors and the unmasked head. Toy biz, am I right? Uh, you guys know they don't look quite right with the Legends. But that is still a personal taste thing, and Legends are prevalent. So here are the Hasbro Gambit and Nightcrawler. With the Hulk and Black Widow. And you can see he is just a little out of scale anyway. Maybe I should open that select Hulk I've been camping on. Magneto and Sabretooth. Man, just these color palettes together get me all riled up. So in a 6 inch scale, Wolverine at 5 foot 3 should be just over 5 inches, but he stands just over 6, so maybe he fits in in a 1 inch bigger scale, which is technically 1 tenth. Marvel Select, these guys are huge. I think he actually does fit a little better here. Maybe Juggernaut's too short. <laughs> Where Todd at? Hey Todd, what you think about the scale? Alright, here's some cloth goods. The NECA Toys Ninja Turtles movie Raphael in Disguise and the now defunct DC Collectibles Batman from the Ninja Turtles crossover. At this scale, I mean, it's pretty good for, for capes and such. I have this one draped all the way over him. It's maybe not his best look for that. You can kind of fold it. This is a pretty simple figure under here, but he does, he does look clean and he's got these cartoon lines. But you know what? Cartoon Donnie over here. You can see the difference in both of these jackets. They're not bad. One may be a little better than the other. It's just, I feel like it's borderline down at this scale, getting clothes to hang right. So I, I guess I'm also saying, too, anything they pull off in this way is admirable. But you have to make concessions. Like, the musculature isn't easily visible because he has a friggin' shirt on, right? But it's like unstable molecules. So they do weird stuff like put little little push-button keypad abdominal something in there to replicate muscle. Do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do-do. All right, seeing as how he does seem to fit a little better in the larger scale, here he is next to a McFarlane Toys Mortal Kombat spawn. In a Jazzwares Halo Spartan Collection Master Chief. And finally, next to the recently reviewed Renew Your Vows 2-Pack Spider-Man and the Marvel Legends Morning Coffee Mostly Bucky Cap Deadpool. Cheers. So, moment of truth. How do I really feel when it's all said and done here? I find the Mezcos a little harder to talk about just because the, the cloth goods thing is just so inherently subjective. It all is, of course. These are, these are toy reviews, man. What do you think of it? What do you think of it? Well, you're here to hear what I think of it. I think it looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good, but straight up, I like the look of an all-plastic Marvel Legends Wolverine. I like that. It looks really nice. It looks like it jumped off the comic page. This looks like a... The way that Super 7 does Ninja Turtles, their, their updates of the original Ninja Turtle toys, these are like updates of Mego figures. 
They look a little bit, you know, pajama-y. Just looks a little bit pajama-y. I, I think that a lighter blue would have been more complimentary to the to to the the lighter yellow they've used. But I'm not really tripping about that. I most of all, I, I don't think I like the mezcoification. I want it to be as accurate to the comic material as possible. That would just mean a plain, simple red belt. I know sometimes that's not enough for these guys, you know. And some of this is reuse the gauntlets, the shoulder pads, maybe the boots. Probably the boots. Probably all of it. Sure wish they had reused the claws though instead of trying again and 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 cutting those like junk. I'm just I'm a little bit more harsh on this figure because where a Marvel Legend was 20, 23, 25, 2799 or whatever, this figure was brace yourselves $155. I'm over here doing the conductor thing with my hands, you know. I know, I know. I got free shipping, 10% off. I think a bunch of us did because we were catching these at the same time. But still, but still, you want to charge that much more. I know it's a smaller company, but but I'm just, I'm going to be a little more harsh. These Legends ones, like I said, they look good all day and I could throw them across the room and pick them up and he still looks great. I spend 40 bucks, 60 bucks, two, three of them. I kit bash them with different heads and whatever. And, and, and those are, they're really nice for me. They work really well for me. People trip about the price increase on the $20 toys, but that's a hell of a gap still between a $20, $28 toy and a $155 toy. Let's start chastising these people a little bit. The base of the figure is just not as good. He comes with so many accessories, and I do love that. I'm, I, I pre-ordered that Spider-Man. I'm on the fence about the Fantastic Four. They absolutely look like dudes in their pajamas for over $400, but they all come with like 30 accessories a piece. I love that. I love that. The articulation, we should be more upset here. It's not a bad articulately articulated body. It, it, it's been pinless the whole time. It's restricted by the clothes. That is what it is. But we should be more upset that the whole time I don't think they have updated the body. Come on now. Come on now. Come on now. Wolverine is my favorite comic book character, you know. So it, it gets extra points from me there. And when it came down to it and I had the thing with the free shipping, the 10% off, I was like, you know what, man? You know what? I should have this. And professionally, as like a toy reviewer, I should have a, a full range of toys. Everything shouldn't be a, just a comparison to some Marvel Legends. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. But again, on that tip, I, I, I fully understand Hasbro is just a much bigger company, you know. So they're able to 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 charge less and for sure these figures are repaints dirt cheap nonsense all day but at the end of that day how does it look man how does it feel how does it articulate and 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 pound for pound man for a, as cheap as those are and as expensive as this one is man they need to try harder they need to try harder um i want to say it's like how do i put this most succinctly and i thought about this a lot and i almost threw it out but i'm back with it it's like it's not greater than the sum of its parts now, it's a lot of great parts here. It's a lot of great parts here. I love it for all of these alternate pieces. But he's got friggin' silver lips. Like, he's got adamantium lips. You know what I'm saying? Little crap like that and the muddy claws and... Don't get me wrong. I think it's a great figure. I'm happy to have it. I wish it was $55 cheaper than it was. $80 cheaper than it was. It's twice as much as regular Mezco's. And it's got quality control issues that the other ones didn't have. I think all the parts it came with are generally pretty great, but it just doesn't achieve something beyond. Beyond that, it still just looks like a dude in his friggin' clothes. Which, next to other Mezco's dudes in their clothes, they, they all bring each other up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But he looks hella out of place in a Marvel Legends collection. Which, you're not gonna put him there, you know? Not, not a big deal. I don't mean to harp on the Legends thing. It's just like, you want five times the money, I want five times the effort. Maybe, maybe just four times. You know, you could, you could lie to me a little bit, I probably wouldn't notice. But I think that's a simple way for anyone to look at it and decide for themselves. For me, I don't regret it. I don't mean to give that impression. He's going to look great living in his little bubble with Mezco Deadpool and Mezco Cable worshiping, you know, Mezco X-Force Wolverine's perfect claws. Thank you guys for sticking with me through this long one. I I have a lot to say here. I pared this thing down a lot, but this this is my jam. The comparisons, the deep dives, the Wolverine. If you guys want to see more, of course, they're not all going to be this long. Leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments if you plan to buy this thing. And if you did, what are the claws like?